welcome to Big Blend Radio, where we celebrate variety and how it adds spice to quality of life. Hey everybody, welcome to the Big Daily Blend. You know, every fourth Sunday we get to hang out with Joey Stuckey. He joins us as co-host and main guest. Uh, Today is the main guest because he's going to talk about women. He likes talking about women. Specifically, he's going to be talking about women in music because we are still celebrating uh, Women's History Month here on Big Blend Radio. But quite frankly, you could listen to this podcast any day, every day, because you know what? Women in music matter every single day. And Joey is the official music ambassador for Macon, Georgia, which is the southern rock capital of the world. He's also an award-winning blind guitarist, a songwriter, a singer, a composer, a producer, a radio and TV personality, a music columnist, educator, and sound engineer. And you can go to his website, joeystuckey.com. So hey, Joey. Hey, my friend. Hope you're well. Where are you going with that guitar in your hand? Uh, I'm going to shoot my old lady. (laughs) <laughs> oh, see, you're not supposed to do that on a women's history. <laughs> no, I know. Well, that's, that's, that, that's the next line of the song for the Jimi Hendrix tune. Hey, but now we could we could put The Wind Cries Mary. That could yeah. be part of a playlist, that's a good, right? Absolutely. Oh, shoot, yeah. That's a, great, that's a great playlist. That's actually one of my very favorite songs. It's a good tune. Well, here's the thing. I know we're going to talk about women in music, but there's also songs about women. That's kind of an interesting part right of like what about rihanna and the welsh witch you know Ah, that's a great tune you know it's funny because back in 2016 we were looking at this idea of so many glass ceilings being shattered um, oh yeah and that year um i came out with a project called ladies of the south and it was, you can find it on Spotify and, uh, or your favorite, uh, you know, uh, streaming service, but it's called Joey Stuckey presents ladies of the South. And what it was, was about, I can't remember, 10 or 12 songs by female artists I'd produced in every genre, you know, from pop, rock, um, singer, songwriter, you know, all this stuff. Um, contemporary Christian. There's a lot of different genres with all these amazing female artists. And I think that women in music in the last you know handful of years have finally really started getting their due. It's taken so long. Um, but, you know, one of the great things about the millennial generation is how much they recognize people's contributions and how diverse they recognize our society really is. And, and, they strive for that reflection. And mm-hmm. I really, I'm really excited by that. And we have a song on that, on that Ladies of the South record that was an homage to how great women are, how amazing women are. And, um, it was written with myself, uh, a friend of mine named Charlie Hoskins and Paul Mad Dog, uh, uh McGann and, uh, his uh not Paul McGann, I'm sorry, that's Doctor Who. I got my <laughs> I got my oh, Paul's well, mixed up. Uh, but uh Did you say Paul, right? That's what yeah, you just Paul, said? Okay, I'm yeah, making Paul. sure. Yeah, Paul and but anyway, uh the they were both from the band The Popes mm. and that band was a spin off of a famous band called The Pogues that you probably know. Right, yeah, yeah. And then and then the drummer uh, who also co wrote that song was from the band Modern English. So mm-hmm. we we four guys got together and wrote the song called What You See Ain't What You Get. And it was all about how cool women are and how women can do anything a man can do. And we chose to have sing that song. A friend of mine, uh she her, you, if you're from Georgia, you know her as Sue Wilkinson, but she also has a side project where she goes under the name of Sue Lou. And she is what Janis Joplin wishes she could have been. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, I want people to hear it because Sue's voice is like the most amazing thing I've ever heard. And why she's not an international superstar, I will never know. But anyway, um, just thinking back on that year and, and, you know, we were seeing so much change and women so much in the news. 
um, it was it was an amazing time. So we put that record out back in 2016. So it's it's but it's it's, it's so many different styles and genres and and flavors. Um, it's I think it's well worth a, a listen and um, and and something to to for sure celebrate during during the month of March. So you know the one thing too, you know when you look at you know people like Janis Joplin, right? And it's about like looking back at who influenced them. It's kind of that ripple effect that went, you know, from way back when to now. And, you know, I look at women's history of music, you know, definitely when we go back to the blues, you know, you got to think like Sister Rosetta Tharp. And, um, oh my gosh, one of my favorites. Really? Oh, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I mean. And, you and, know, my, my favorite the female vocalist that will always have place number one in my heart just because of her absolute genius is Ella Fitzgerald. Um, mm. Just, yeah. just not only was she a great singer, but she was a great musician in the sense that she was just so gifted in her improvisation in her arranging skills then you get into her tone, all the different tones she had, uh, all the different flavors of her voice that she could deliver. She was very emotive, and she'll always like to me be be the queen of 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 like I think you know just like where so many other people got their inspiration. Even though you know a lot of female vocalists today don't don't sound like her or anything like that. I think if you're in music, you can't help but be influenced by Ella Fitzgerald. Well, her, and then I go to Africa, and I look at Miriam Makeba. I, I don't know if you've heard of her. I am not familiar. Uh, oh, man, stop the presses. Uh, she, <laughs> um, no, she she really did a lot. She was also an actor. She was an activist, a civil rights activist, and um, her voice is absolutely Absolutely amazing. And um, she, so she toured uh, through South Africa. I think she went over to, um, you know, Europe, as many people did back then. Uh, she also worked with Harry, uh, Harry Belafonte. Oh, wow. And yeah, no, no, she is. She was a very famous for singing Pata Pata. Um, it, it's, it's weird because, you know, the just growing over, growing up over in Africa, you kind of hear these women and um she also I think she was married to Hugh Masekela at one point or dated him. They had a little thing going, no matter what. One of the <laughs> I don't know how big it went, but um but yeah she she was very active. Um it's pretty huge actually what she did and um well, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's interesting to me because so much of the best music comes as a vehicle for something else, whether it's civil rights, whether it's protesting Vietnam. I mean, so much of the best music comes from really a place of using music as a vehicle for communication uh, rather than, you know, entertainment. And uh, so I'm not surprised that, that yeah, she had Mary, that kind of Mary impact. Um, yeah. was huge on that. But these voices, um, these women out there, and then you've got to think about all these women around the world who've been singing it as part of just life, you know, sure. singing was a way of getting through the day. Yeah. Too. Still is for me. It is for me. Dang. Yeah. I mean, I, I do, I do it for a living, but it's still, it's still when I'm, when I'm happy, I sing, when I'm sad, I sing, you know, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm just kind of floating around, you know, doing office work, I'm, I'm humming around or singing around. So yeah, it's, it's very, and that's what's so, amazing about you know the u.s don't get me wrong i love the u.s i love our music i love but we don't take time to experience music like we should because it's such a gift and you know when i was a kid back in the 80s you know we we would sit down uh once a week and and three or four of my friends would get together and we would listen to records we would sit down Mm -hmm. and listen to the whole record somebody would bring over you know, I'd bring over Michael Jackson. Somebody else might bring over uh, Def Leppard and, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And we would sit down and just listen to albums. Oh, my their God. Entirety. Did you just say Michael Jackson and Def Leppard in the same yeah. sentence? Yeah. Holy crap. 
<laughs> so we, we would listen to Tears for Fears and mm. Yes and uh, yeah, yeah. Lover, Lover Boy and, you know, Journey, uh, you know, and, 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 and uh, Heart and Whitney Houston and all that. Oh, you I'm know, glad and, you brought up Heart. That's some, that's some musical. Oh, well, she's, greatness. she's, they're, they're both, both those sisters are I mean, fantastic. Nancy Wilson's a heck of a guitarist, right? And oh, then you got, oh, yeah. you know, and like her vocals can't, can't she's, match she's that. Pretty, she's pretty amazing. I mean, what they're, about they're both, Aretha both Franklin incredible. and Mav- oh. Mavis Staples? Yeah, yeah. Aretha Franklin is one of my total favorites. I mean, in fact, her collaboration with George Michael, I think, is a, a fantastic record. But Aretha mm-hmm. has done so, so much. Um, so, so many important seminal tunes, like Respect. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you think about all the stuff. Um, and, uh, but anyway, yeah. So I, I, I just remember that we used to sit down and, and make mm-hmm. it an event to listen to music. And in Europe, they still, still do. Mm-hmm. But here in the States, we don't as much. Um, I don't, it's kind of gone into, yeah, everybody's on there. So, you know, I think it was the invention of the Walkman that started messing with things, which the Walkman <laughs> was cool, right? But the Walkman, Walkman started this portable thing. I love the ghetto blaster. Okay. Cause then you could like get people to listen to music. They didn't know by just blasting them with, yeah. you will listen to this. You know, you got to think back to some of the women who made history, just, you know, when you think about a ghetto blaster and like Walkman's, but Walkman's became this personal music journey, right? Which right, I think right. is great. It's kind of like reading a book and all of that. So th- there's something to it, but I miss listening party parties for sure. And yeah. when I think about the women, I mean, you got to think Deborah Harry, she made some. Oh, big moves. time. Yeah. She made moves. Um, you know, I just, just got in... her autobiography to read. So I haven't, oh, I haven't cool. read it yet, but I just got it on, on audiobook. And so it's on my, it's in my virtual nightstand. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, some of these women really kind of change things. Annie Lennox, like that voice to me, I still think she's got an incredible there are, voice. There are people you know? that claim, and I don't, I haven't done the research, so I can't fall on either side of the argument. But there are people that claim that Debbie Harry did one of the earliest rap songs with yes. uh, Rapture, right? Yeah. So, so well, it was um, kind of like a, it was a try, and then she, I think she did a little reggae thing too. Like she tried, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. saying it it was, but then like Queen Latifah, she kind of got in there with rap and hip hop. Oh, uh, sure. She she did some stuff, you know, that was pretty like, wow, okay. Well, I wouldn't mess with Queen Peppa. Latifah. Yeah, uh, don't, yep. Yeah. You know, uh, so. It, and of I'm course just, you've got our modern superstars like Beyonce and Taylor Swift that are. Beyonce that are in a country nice. album. Here we go. You know, and, and how about Dolly Parton? Because. That's a woman who has been making music since she was 14 years old. She's what in her 80s now, and she's a badass. Still making music, and not only does she still make music, but she's very inclusive and loving to everybody. And mm. she uses her money to help people. I mean, in in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, you know, if you've got good grades, they they help the people of that uh, county. Um, with uh, the children with uh, scholarships for college. Uh, she sends out free books to kids. She does all kinds of things. And, you know, she just did her first rock album uh, mm-hmm. with some other seminal women. Uh, for example, Pat Benatar partnered, mm-hmm. partnered with her on Cheryl that Crow? record. Cheryl Crow, yeah. absolutely. So there's a lot of cool, I mean, Dolly did some, some pretty cool stuff. And of course she got with the two remaining Beatles too, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, which is, you know, exciting for me. And, and uh, another woman who's really important to women in music is Joan Jett. And Dude, uh, you just talked about one of my heroes. Yeah. Like, okay. Too. So our, our friends over at, um, in Asheville, the line on the Rose bed and breakfast. I don't know if you've been on a show with them yet. Uh, I, have, Asheville, North the, Carolina. I, don't, they, I don't think I have. Oh, they are music like freaks like they just and i mean that in a good way people um <laughs> so they travel <laughs> like they're they're mr and mrs wild of Asheville. we call them because they are either out in nature if they're not running the inn which is a wild thing of itself um to to run a bed and breakfast it's like okay. you know you know you we've talked about faulty towers right they're the ones that we go uh, in sit for once in a while and um play faulty towers but um they are either out looking for wildlife in you know the Blue Ridge Mountains or wherever around the world because they've traveled the world doing it or it's out listening to music they just came back from 
a Pantera concert and disturbed <laughs> and, you know, so they're out doing it. So for Karen, she's Lita Ford and I'm all about Joan Jett. So we have like a thing going. <laughs> so because really, you know, and I think Tina Turner did a lot in regards oh. to letting us know that women could rock it. Like Aretha came from that soul gospel you know, say, like Mavis Staples, like Mavis Staples to me is really one of my favorite. Her and Nina yeah. Simone, um, those two are like icons to me, especially when we talk about black women who made change and posit they well, Nina told it as it was, right? Yeah. And um, but then, you know, Mavis is like, Come on, man, we can make it better. You know, <laughs> Nina's just like Mississippi, goddamn. <laughs> <You know, laughs> so it's it's in you know, they they all did their thing and, and Mavis is still going, man, and, and just blows my mind. But um going to Lita Ford and Joan Jett, Tina Turner, I think, in a weird way, helped set that stage when she said, I wanna rock. And I know that it was kind of all at the same time when Tina got away from Ike and everything. The eighties were coming and I mean just kind of thinking it was kind of around the same time when women said we could rock it. We don't have to be pretty little girls sitting on a stage and being yeah. like the backup well, singer. You we know? should, we should definitely talk about um, my experience in, and, you know, last month at the Grammys because uh, I was at the Grammys, as you know, I'm, I'm a board member mm -hmm. of the Atlanta chapter and, um, and we were there and women were really the dominant force at the celebration. We celebrated Tina Turner uh, and, and because she passed away. Um, so she was celebrated. But uh, Miley Cyrus, um, who's a very strong independent woman, uh, came out and, and sang and did an amazing job. Dua Lipa was there. Uh, and, of course, Taylor Swift racking up some awards yeah. as well. And Taylor Swift... You know, I, I think about these amazing women in music. And as I was saying, Dolly Parton is one of those people that, first of all, I love her as a person. I like her spirit. Second, I like her as a musician. She's a great guitar player. She's a great singer. She's a great songwriter. But I also have the utmost respect for her as a businesswoman. And, mm -hmm. you know, the song, I Will Always Love You, which... Uh, Dolly mm -hmm. recorded. Actually, she wrote Jolene and I Will Always Love You the same day. Mm -hmm. So what a prolific day that was. Um, but, you know, uh, Elvis wanted to record I Will Always Love You, but they said to her that he would have to own the song. She'd have to sell the, her rights to the song. Hell no. And, and she didn't. And, and so everybody thought she made a bad mistake and all this kind of stuff. But then Whitney Houston did it. Oh, Whitney's it, another one. Ooh. Yeah, and, and did it in a way that was so profound um, that, you know, and so Dolly Dolly made quite a quite a tidy sum with that uh, with that song. But Whitney took it to a whole new level. But mm -hmm. so I think Dolly Parton is one of the great women in business. And then you move on to Madonna, who is another incredible businesswoman. And I think of Madonna... Madonna, when she, I'll tell you, when she did the Ray of Light album and she did the movie Evita, I feel like she hit a whole new level of artistry. I think she really worked hard. You could tell that she worked hard. Her voice was the best it had ever been. Her songwriting, you know, all these things were really, that era for her was very profound. So that to me musically was very profound. But I, I think of Madonna as a little bit more of an entertainer because mm -hmm. she's an okay, she's an okay singer. You know, mm. she's not bad. She's not great. She's not bad. But, you know, she's a heck of a dancer. Um, she's a sex symbol. But she's a really smart businesswoman. And it has made really good decisions and, and stuff like that. And so you move from her into sort of the, I think this is sort of stair step. And like Lady Gaga, uh, I think, who is in some ways sort of Madonna's descendant, if you were. Uh, and then I think of Taylor Swift, who... Um, you know, uses her platform extremely well, really mm -hmm. knows how to how to take care of her fans um, and and really, again, really knows what she's doing. I mean, from from a business perspective, she has stood up for musicians that couldn't stand up for themselves. You know, right. when Ta Taylor has and Lady Gaga has stood up for young yeah. girls in well, right. all and, kinds and of ways. 
that's that's absolutely right. And Taylor, you know, from a business perspective, you know, Apple Music was saying, uh, hey, we're going to give people three months free trial of our Apple Music app and we're not going to pay artists uh, during the free trials. And Taylor Swift was like, the hell you say? And, yeah. you know, if Joey Stuckey pulls his catalog from Spotify or Apple Music, nobody cares. But if Taylor Swift pulls her catalog from Spotify or Apple Music, that's suddenly a real impact on their bottom line. And so little things like that, you know, are really important for, for, for the entire music industry. And then you look at Taylor Swift, who also wanted her back catalog of albums, her masters, we call them. She wanted mm-hmm. her masters back. The record label sold her masters to somebody else, even though she wanted to buy them. And she's like, OK, well, that's no problem. I'll just re-record my entire catalog and I'll own those. That well, is incredible. What the Melissa Manchester is going through that right now yeah. um, of getting, you know, redoing her things. Um, some women that came up as you were talking because you, you got my mind in the business and all of that. Yeah. Um, just some icons. We've got to got to mention the Barbara Streisand, you know, of as course. a crooner. Absolutely. You know, uh, um, Barbara Streisand, uh, Mariah Carey. You know, I think what we've got to go. I want to go back to Mariah Carey, like when she first started. You know, yeah. um, she really has a, an amazing voice and things have changed for the years. I think that what's kind of weird is the fame thing really messes with stuff mm-hmm. and it gets weird. Like sometimes I just don't want to know anything. Just let me hear the music and that's it. And that's what yeah. I have to say about some of it, including the Taylor Swift stuff. I'm sick of it. Stop it. Yeah. You know, and there's <laughs> nothing against her, but it actually yeah, yeah. can create, it can actually create, um, an animosity that shouldn't be there at times. And at the same time, or it can empower like Lady Gaga has done some empowering stuff. Um, I want to say share, share has to be called out, you know, in a positive way. She has done so much uh, for different communities. Um, Just, you know, Bette Midler, we can't leave her out. Sure. Bette is amazing. And I mean, she was a smart businesswoman. She's not stopping. Uh, mm-hmm. Celine Dion, didn't she go to the Grammys too? You saw her? Yeah, absolutely. At the Grammys? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, incredible. So some of and those she are showed the up, even, though, even though I understand she wasn't feeling well that night, she actually still showed up. So she's, um, yeah. See, well, Tina Turner sang once with the flu and she had like this raging fever, got up and said, I'm yeah, going to back I feel out. So, you know? I feel so mixed about that because I have in my younger days performed really, really sick. Um, and the, the problem with that is that like part of me is like, yeah, the show must go on. I'm tough. I can make it. That's like one side. But then the other side is like, yeah, but if you make, if you damage your voice and make yourself sick and end up in the hospital, that's not helping anybody. So I have done it. I won't do it now. <laughs> right. I've done I've, it and I've, I've blown my voice and I didn't yeah, know what I've I was doing, but I've done that. I've fever before and I, I won't do that mm-hmm. again. No, I've done, I recently did an interview with the fever and halfway through I'm going, we had to do an audio only because I wasn't feeling well. I was like, I'm fine. And then all of a sudden I'm like, is this what a hot flash feels like? <laughs> 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 it was fun. It was fun. And, and like, it was a musician uh, that was on and uh, he was very, polite <laughs> i'm gonna put it that way but i, I want to touch on um some songwriters sure. uh, one is um who got an early start and just You're gonna say carol out king. dang it dude how did you know i just know carol king now i have uh read her autobiography which is amazing um and of course i'm a fan of the music and I actually got the privilege of being her sound technician for a concert. Um, wow! One time, yeah, she was on she was on tour, uh, stumping for John Kerry, and uh, and and she came to town and needed a sound tech, and I got to run sound for her when she did her her mini concert and talk, and it was a lot of it was really cool. I got a, I got to get a picture with her too, so it was really cool. She's an That's incredible awesome. songwriter. Yeah, an incredible songwriter. But you got to go back in her history too. I mean, it's like I encourage people to do it. And she's an activist for the environment and um, an activist for wild horses, like Lacey J. Dalton. Um, we met her many years ago um, when we were out looking at what was going on with the wild horse situation because 
Um, people are poaching them. They're being rounded up. It's a they're whole being other poached. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the guy that there was a guy murdering them from helicopter, and he's the one who uses a helicopter to round them up for the Bureau of Land. Oh my god! Do not, do not get me started. Anyway, it's a whole. That's awful. There's a, that's a whole, we've done so many shows on it and it got crazy and no one is really, anyway, Lacey J. Dalton stood up for wild horses. Willie Nelson has stood up for wild horses. Snoop Dogg has stood up for them. Um, and Carol King is one of them as well, uh, standing up. For, and, and I think, um, Willie Nelson, has, and we got to give a shout out to Bobby Nelson, right? Um, you know, he's, he's done, she's done a lot and, uh, but he he rescued them too. He rescued yeah. horses and has them out on Luck Ranch. But um, anyway, we met her and and she's you know, they, you know you. I think when you have this platform, it's you you make these choices, and sometimes yeah. it's about um, where you are financially, how you've been raised, um, what what your goals were, like who are you as a person. And so when things get amplified as your fame and fortune comes in, what are you amplifying? And I think that, especially, I think like Miley Cyrus, you know, when you're a teen, starts really hard to be normal. Oh, I, very you much know, so. I mean, look at Drew Barrymore and all of that, all of this reconditioning that they've had to do in their lives to become kind of normal and then stay in the spotlight. And I mean, to have to read yourself in the tabloids, like that's insane. People it's make hard. up stuff about you, and you know, artists and musicians all wear the heart on the sleeve, right? Sure. And so yeah, when you're in all of that, so, and for women, we're sensitive. Doesn't mean yeah. we're wusses. Did I say no, that? Are we allowed to say wussy? I um, think so. With a W, by the way. I just didn't yeah. be sure. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not strong. That's right. You know? And so, oh, I am strong. <laughs> I am invincible. <laughs> okay, so it's That's just getting song. on and on. Yeah, um, we got to, you know, we got to think about Linda Ronstadt, Helen Reddy. Yeah. I love Helen Reddy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And, um, I've, I've got, I'm making this list as we talk and it's kind of ridiculous. Now, Linda well, Ronstadt comes from Tucson where we were based out of. Yeah. Linda I, Ronstadt. I also will say somebody else that was paid tribute to at the Grammys who was really important in a lot of ways is Sinead O'Connor. Um, oh, I heard that. Didn't, didn't, um, Annie Lennox sing her part? Like, she did. <gasps> tell me about that because Sinead O'Connor did it was it was, was incredible. like wild I was so I was so and Linux sounded amazing I mean she sounded so good she hit all the high notes it was really fascinating and let's not forget Tracy Chapman who dude uh, yes who who was there at the Grammys and sang and it was amazing to have her song redone and mm-hmm. it's a, it's a hit again it's a hit again and well, her her version's a hit again as well. <laughs> I love That's that. Right. Well, you know, I grew up with her and she's a, she's always been a huge, huge part of like, I mean, I still have the albums, you know, it's like. Me too. And, and you know, I, I was watching on social media going, who is this woman? I'm like, what, what do you mean? Who, how dare you? You know, but th- oh, I, know. I love these, these stories of artists rising up together. Look at Joni Mitchell and Brandy Carlisle. And, the, and oh, that gosh, relationship, so good, so good. That's huge. That and, and didn't Joni sing too at the at yeah, the Grammys? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. She was she was there, and 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 I thought in excellent form. Oh man, um, I want to give a shout out to Christine McVie from Fleetwood Mac. Oh because yes, because she absolutely. was an amazing vocalist, keyboardist, Wonderful vocals. great piano writer. Player. Yeah, yeah, great writer. You know, um. And then, you know, when you just look at all these women that we're talking about, it's kind of insane. It's like this giant list of, of women. But when you go way back and move it forward, you just see, you know, like you were talking about Ella Fitzgerald. And, you know, you go back to those women who wailed, you know, and sang these ballads and these bluesy jazz numbers, too. It's just like. Yeah, you had Nina Simone and Sarah Vaughn. Mm-hmm. And, and, Sarah uh, Vaughn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and we can't forget Lady Day, um, you know. And uh, the thing about Billie Holiday is mm. she had so much soul and sorrow in her voice. Like, she could be singing a happy song and you'd want to cry <laughs> because she just had, when she did Strange Fruit, I mean, that was just, that was just heartbreaking, earth-shattering, you know, music. 
Um, but what an important song. And, uh, but, but just an incredible, incredible artist. And then, you know, uh, just, I mean, there's so many incredible women. Uh, Rosemary Clooney to me is one of the greats. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, I listen to her at least once a year because my wife and I rewatch White Christmas every single year. <laughs> so you have to. So what about Eartha Kitt? Do you ever yeah. listen to her? She's got oh, yeah. a unique voice. No one can. And she, well, her. she's again, she's another she's she's kind of like the forerunner to Madonna to me. She's very much a sex symbol. And and a lot of her songs were sort of novelty comedy songs, you know, that she that I heard anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah. Great. I mean, fantastic. Nancy's uh, what about yelling. The, okay, I was yeah. going to say Nancy's yelling from the other room. Patty Page. Patty Page, sure. And I was going to say mm -hmm. Pearl Bailey is another great. Pearl Bailey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Wow. Well, we got Nancy Sinatra. <laughs> yeah, Nancy, those boots are made for walking, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I I think you know it's just interesting. You know, you think about like the Mamas and the Papas and Jefferson Airplane with Grace Slick. You know. Oh yeah. And you, I mean, Grace Slick. I don't think anybody's got her voice. You know. No. Well, that's what's so cool about some of these ladies is that the, so many of them are so distinctive that within two seconds, you know who it is. I mean, we talked about Cher earlier, but boy, I mean, just yeah, just that's such her, a distinct no. voice. I mean, Eartha Kitt, such a distinct voice. I mean, you know, it's just it's instantly recognizable. That is one of the things I'd say in modern music because of all the effects and all the pitch correction and stuff like that. Oh God, I hate all that. The, 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 I feel like there are some female artists that are still very recognizable, but, but a lot of the music's become a little more homogenized because of production techniques and uh, has a little less character. Uh, Miley Cyrus, I think is pretty distinct, has a pretty distinct voice. So, um, you know, you can't, you, you can pick her out of the crowd. Well, um, I want to, I want to definitely, this is one person who really needs to have a big shout out when we talk about women, um, is Bonnie Raitt and how yeah. she's got women, you know, she was like a torchbearer for, you know, musicians, not just women, but, you know, um, blues artists to be paid. Um, they really were just, you know, here they were making this music and the record companies were making the money. And she did, you know, so much for women and for musicians. You know, I, and she's I, amazing. Too. Yeah, I, I think I think she won uh, a Grammy last year, mm -hmm. um, if I remember correctly. I think three, and, actually. Uh, yeah, and some newspaper said, "Who is this Bunny Rate winning this major award?" And uh, I was, yeah, I was just really, I think it was a UK based newspaper. And I was like, Boy. and then, and then, like they said, unknown blues artist wins award. What? Or like that. Don't. And I was, dude. I was pretty, ups I was pretty upset. <laughs> that I is know. insane. That is I mean, insane. She has an interesting tie to Georgia that I'll tell you about because she has recorded, I believe I'm right in the number here, but two songs written by my good friend Randall Bramlett, who is oh, one of yeah. yeah, one of the great Georgia legendary Georgia musicians who in his time uh, he's been a solo artist, but he also played with a band called Cowboy that was pretty famous. He played with a band called Sea Level that was pretty famous, but uh mm -hmm. both both those real regionally. But he also was a sideman and performed with Greg Allman and Friends Tour. He also played with Traffic and Steve Winwood as a such as a side player. So anyway, but she recorded two of his tunes, and uh, oh. so that's her. That's her tie to Georgia in my mind. Okay, so what about Mama Cass? Yeah, From the Mama. I mean, I'm serious. Fantastic. Like, I mean, she went too soon. You know, she really did. And then I got to bring up another favorite, Chrissy Hind, because she's just a total badass. She goes there with oh, Joan, big, like she's in the time. Joan Jet thing. You know, yeah, all of that. Yeah. That's, Lita Ford, Chrissy Hine. Like if you were in high school and somebody picked on you and they were sitting at the other table, those three women would get up and take out the bully. They would. <laughs> they would. <laughs> I've never I've never thought about that before, but that is that I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I do. I think other people would sit down and try and talk to the bully and they would just like, you know, 
And now I better watch Open my a mouth. Open can of whoop ass. Yeah. 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 There you go. Well done, Joey. This is why you're on the show. <laughs> Queen Lisa's mouth out with soap. Yeah, but yeah, I no. I mean, we've got these amazing women and Cindy Lauper. Oh, hello. Oh, I can't forget her. So good. And talk about someone who stood up for so many people's rights and animal rights and all kinds of stuff. You know, Cindy's awesome. You know, yeah, and she's great. I think she helped with Roy Orbison's career too when she did um, I Drove All Night. And, um, you know, I think she helped regenerate, like, where did that song come from? You know? Yeah. yeah. There's, I love that's Roy a good Orbison. Point. Oh, me too. I, love- I, 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 I really am a big Cindy Lauper fan. And, um, you know, she's done so many incredible, what a, what a voice. Um, just incredible and so powerful. Well, let's look at Lilith Fair. You know, yeah. because that's, you know, when we talk about women getting together, Lilith Fair was um, huge. I think that was one of the first Natalie women's Merchant. music. Natalie, yeah. oh, Natalie Merchant, of course, Sarah yeah. McLaughlin. Sarah McLaughlin, um, yeah. Um, I wanted to say, um, oh, Meredith Brooks. It's, it's Meredith Brooks. Thank you. How did you know? I'm just, I'm just cool like that. <laughs> yeah. Meredith and, Brooks. And, if, and, and go ahead. I know who you're going to say. You're going to talk about the Indigo Girls? Did I get uh, it? Absolutely, Indigo Girls. See? And and I don't know that she was part of Lilith Fair, but I, I do think about women that changed paradigms. And I have to think of Alanis Morissette. Alanis. Um, yeah, because... Joan Osborne. Yeah, Joan Osborne. Wow, what a... Boy, her... her her first album is one of my favorite albums. Mine too. It's definitely in my top 100 albums of all time. And she's right. She just did a new track, a new album, a new track. And, um, but yeah, yeah, St. Teresa, still one of the best. Oh, so, so good. And, you know, but my, my favorite track on that record, and this is selfish, but my favorite track is a song called Spiderweb. Oh, I love and, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, Ray Charles. And it, it talks about, I dream the, the, the lyric is so great. I dreamed of Ray Charles last night. He could see just fine. You know, I asked him for a lullaby. He said, honey, I don't sing no more. Oh, and I just, awesome. I, I just love that so much. Mm. Uh, but boy, I think, I think she was just incredible as well. But I gotta go listen set, to that album again. Oh, it's so yeah. good. Really changed what female music sounded like with the Jagged Little Pill record. Mm-hmm. Um, it was edgy. It was imperfect, but it was really emotive. It was so, so incredible. You know, what's so amazing about that is a lot of people don't know it, but she was a pop star in Canada. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I like mean, Shania polished, Twain. yeah, polished pop star. And she changed her sound. She evolved and said, I, this, the, that music I've been making no longer meets the needs mm-hmm. of the time. Uh, but you're right. And, and Shania Twain revolutionized Nashville. They hated her when she first came to town and, and she was doing all this like country pop stuff with Mutt Lang. And, but uh, she had changed country music forever. I mean, country, the sound of country music today is directly in my mind, uh, a result of what Shania Twain and Mutt Lang did. All right. And whether, whether you like Quickly it or hate give... it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. It's not my thing. Yeah. But she did a good job and, um, and she's a good person. She yeah, worked yeah. hard. I mean, she raised yeah. her family, her sisters, her siblings on a farm. And yeah. Shania Twain's stories. And then Mutt Lang was a real, you know what, mm-hmm. um, you know, bad, bad. And then, but I think he was, yeah, that's a whole other story. But it's, it's that, that was, that was messed up. <laughs> that was messed up. I mean, the, a lot of the women went that's through that. Atlantis Morris said, Jack a Little Pill came yeah. from breakups and everything. And, you know, she just took, she was like, you know what, you know, screw you, I'm going to do this. And, and she did it. And, you know, Taylor Hawkins was her drummer for a while, too. You I know? know. Flea was her bass player. Ah, oh, dude. Seriously, I didn't know that part. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's crazy, man. Flea's nuts. Yeah. I heard him on, I think it was his podcast. Yeah. Rick Rubin was on his podcast. I encourage people to listen to that because they were talking about, Rick Rubin wrote a book about creativity and. Yeah. I've got um, it on my nightstand, but I hadn't read it yet. Oh, it's Rick Rubin is. Yeah. He's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. I think Um, he's done a lot with Lady Gaga and and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, the peppers and everything, but um, but I want to go back to some country artists and going back to um, 
with, with Lilith Fair, they brought in Jewel, who's at the beginning of oh, Jewel's time, great, yeah, yeah. right. And now yeah. she's a she's opened up like a mental health thing for girls and women, yeah, to better themselves and and get through things um, in life, emotional trauma and things like that. And Emmy Lou Harris came up on stage, and that was a big deal because they introduced Emmy Lou Harris to a younger generation. And I Emmy love Lou Emmy Harris. Harris. She's so good. She's just so chilled out, man. I mean, and and her, uh, she was with Graham Parsons, right? Um, right up until he passed. I think when yes. he died in Joshua Tree area, they dragged his his body around in a coffin in Joshua Tree National Park and set yeah. it on fire. Yeah, like Joshua Tree's got some crazy ass stuff going on out oh, there. Yeah. We should do yeah, a show does. just on that. Like yeah. we were talking about regional music and stuff. We should do a show just on. That well, area. I've been I've been trying to get invited to some of the interesting things that happen in that neck of the woods. I've got some friends that are part of that scene. And Happy and Harriet's, to, you need to play there. That's where you. Yeah, need I've, to go. I've, been, I've been trying to get involved. I just never seem to hit hit town at the right time. But oh, <laughs> anyway, and Harriet's. Happy and Harriet's is iconic, man. Um, yes. It's really cool. And then going into country, you reminded me to bring up Reba McIntyre. Sure, because she's like. I think and Loretta Lynn, right? Oh Talk about gosh. these women. Loretta yeah. Lynn is is, is uh, uh, she is one of the matriarchy. <laughs> I mean, she's 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 incredible. What and, did you think about her working with Jack White? I think it's amazing. I think I, think, I like I think, Jack White. <laughs> I, I think it's amazing. I think I think what I love is is these a lot of these ladies like Dolly Parton and Loretta Lynn. Loretta Lynn are saying, uh, "I'm still." Uh, an artist. Uh, I'm still able to do this. Uh, and I'm still am interested in exploring what's going on in music now. I'm not stuck in 50 years ago. I think that's amazing. I I love that. I love that they keep evolving like that. Like Dolly Parton, right? She's done yeah. And, you know, and whether or not you like the evolving part, because sometimes evolving is messy. And the first time it, it happens, it's either really magical or there's some rough edges or whatever. But I think it's it's cool, and she did it for her husband too. You know, she was like, he's been by her side for years. He's like the quiet partner, you know. Yeah. Um, but well, it, the only it, thing that's inevitable is change, and mm. so you you have to embrace it, whether it turns out the way you want it or not. I mean, the, if the more you embrace it, the more you go with it, the more you work with it, mm. the better off your life is going to be. I mean, because it well, you you yeah. know change is going to happen. <laughs> and and I see some of the women like that are still going right, you know, like Stevie Nicks is still touring. Oh, yeah. People are still, still loving it, and so still she may not good. have the high, you know, octave anymore, but she's modified her music to still give off that performance. And I want to bring up the importance of backup singers. Like you got to think about, you know, Pink Floyd's and you know Pink Floyd and the Rolling Stones. Those two bands would be not the same without their backup singers, the McBroom oh, sisters. Very true. Um, they, Pink they Floyd uh, on "Shine on You, Crazy Diamond." I mean, without the yeah. backup vocals, that'd be and and things like uh, "Tumbling Dice" with the Rolling Stones. And just you got to have no. those backups. Yeah, yeah. What was that? But, what was yeah. that? Uh, there was a movie. Was it was it Twenty Feet to Stardom or Fifty Feet from Stardom? That was all about uh, backup singers. Um, Cheryl Crow was a backup singer for Michael Jackson. Going back to him, she was, and and also for Don Henley. Really? Wow. Yeah, she got around. That's yeah. two different. That's like a, like the opposite end of the spectrum too, man. Doing yeah. that. Well, what about okay? So I want to go to some guitarists too. So you know, Cheryl Crow to me was amazing because she got out there with an accordion as a woman. I mean, listen, that that and standing up, not sitting down. You're carrying that over like a prominent part of your body and yeah, playing an tough. accordion. So and then playing bass and singing is not easy. That is. No. No, that that so I and and so let's go to some of the instrumentalists, right? So look at um, Sam Fish, the guitarist, uh, Susan Tedeschi, uh, yeah, incredible. Yeah. Uh, Sam Fish is pretty wild out there. She's good. What about Beth Hart? Well, she's not a musician as such, but Beth Hart is crazy. Beth Hart's great. In fact, good, good friend of mine uh, was the recording engineer for her live album um, uh, that's on Blu-ray. And uh, yeah, really, that was recorded. I think at like, oh, uh, where was it? Albert Hall, maybe, but it's some some famous venue in the UK. I forget which one, but uh, yeah, she's fantastic. Uh, now, okay, so 
Carla Santana's wife, because she was on our show. And um, she, oh man, Cindy is, as a drummer, well, like Sheena E, right? We've got to give oh, her a shout yeah. out. Oh yeah, big but time. but but Cindy Cindy Blackman, right? Um, Cindy Blackman Santana. She was a drummer for you know Lenny Kravitz. Um, God, her 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 list is long, and it's really cool to see her now tour with Carlos. And um, I don't, they just are such a good match, man. Her and, her work see, with Lenny Kravitz is pretty amazing. I mean, I, I loved it. I Lenny Kravitz is good, man. And I, I think they were they were really good together, you know. They were. But I just think of, you know, there's such good instrumentalists out there, whether it be on keys, whether it be on guitar, bass, you know, but drummers, Sheena E. I get excited. I get yeah, excited pretty, to see women who are playing, playing bass or drums because you don't and see you that, have, that you often. And you have people like uh, Candy Dolfer on uh, saxophone mm-hmm. um, who played with Prince and did a lot of other fun stuff. So that's, you know. What about Maria Muldar? Am I, I don't even say her name right, do I? Muldar? Muldar? I'm, and, not, I'm not familiar with who that is. Okay. What about Sade, the singer? Oh, gosh. So cool. So cool. Right? Yeah. It It is. Um, yeah. There's so many good women out there. I hope people go in there because and, and listen to all the names we're throwing out. And it's not just throwing them out like willy-nilly. This is just... There are such superb women who have done writing and the com- the composing. Oh, okay. So Chris Stapleton's wife needs to get a shout out because she writes half of his songs and makes it all work. Like seriously. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. She is an incredible songwriter. And that's the other thing. You know, a lot of women, like Meg Trainer, right, has written a bunch of songs for other people. So when you hear songs that you like, I always encourage people to look up. It's it's not as fun now. Like we used to get the albums and look at the notes and everything, right? Um, but to to look at who wrote the songs is important. And well, a lot of times it's another yeah. woman that you you didn't to, know. To your you point, know? there's some really incredible female artists who started off as songwriters for other big artists. I'm thinking about Julia Michaels here. Uh, who's incredible. If you don't know her, uh, her name's not super familiar, but she's got a couple albums of her own now, but she wrote a lot of songs. And also there's Skylar Gray, who wrote a lot of the top lines for Eminem. Um, wow. It, and so they're both ama- just amazing female uh, songwriters and then artists in their own right. But they started off writing hit songs for other people and then ended up doing finally doing an album. And you look wow. at look at Kim Karn, who... You know, oh, yeah. Betty Davis eyes. She's not the greatest singer in the world, um, but she's mm. unique and and very. Identifiable. No one can sing that song like her. Yeah, There's just yeah. an app. It's almost like this one hit wonder that needs to stay exactly like it's it's that is it. Like well, again, it, she was a, she was a songwriter, uh, but then she, they're like, well, you know, who do we get to sing this? And so she like she sang it, and they're like, oh, well, then you should do it. We should release this with you singing it. I mean, you know, so that's that's really that's really cool um, mm. to to see that and and to see these amazing female singer songwriters. I'm telling you, man, if you if you get a chance, go out and check out Julia Michaels and Skylar Gray because they are really something. Mm. Um, and there's actually uh, an Apple Music session with Skylar Gray where it's just acoustic guitar or piano and her vocal that's really special. It's something I highly recommend. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go listen to Joan Osborne now. I'm, I'm all into Joe's. Once I get started there, it doesn't end. I really like her. That, that first know? record, I mean, all her stuff is good, but that first album to me is just as hard to. And I, I would like to throw out one other female artist that mm-hmm. I'm. Uh, and I know we, we were probably running out of time, but uh, Amy Mann is one of my favorite uh, yeah. artists of all time. And she's married to Michael Penn. Mm hmm. Uh, who is also an incredible singer songwriter. Uh, but yeah, she's great. And, you know, she's done, she had the band Till Tuesday, which you may remember from the 80s. They had mm-hmm. that song Voices Carry. Um, but her, her, uh, her solo records are some of my favorite recordings of all time. So mm-hmm. 
I, I definitely recommend if you're looking for something new um, and you don't, you're not familiar with Amy Mann, you should definitely check that out. I've seen her in concert twice. So uh, that's, that's, that's I, pretty good for me. <laughs> I want to, I, I want to go yeah. back. Oh, I got two other women that I have to bring up. Right. Um, I'll Diana, it. Diana crawl. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, she's she's highly talented. It's not always my cup of tea, personally. Right. But I'm with you. I, I I I respect and admire her, while not being my favorite thing to listen to. But uh, yeah. we were back in twenty. It was either late twenty twelve or early twenty thirteen. I can't remember which. We had the the my jazz album out, which is called Mixture, and um, we were we were charting on what's called CMJ. And that's the College Music Journal charts. Uh, so it's kind of like Billboard magazine for college radio. And we were on the top 40 uh, jazz charts for, I don't know, six weeks or something. I can't remember how long. And we, we peaked at number nine. And at one point, I was actually ahead of her in the, uh, in the charts. Um, and I'm bragging on that because I, don't, I didn't last long. She, she definitely, you know, beat me out <laughs> later, but I'm bragging on that because, mm. because I had just me and she had a, a real record label. And so that was quite the accomplishment. But anyway, I'm, I'm sort of saying that tongue in cheek, but it's, it is true, but it was, it was fun to see her name as someone I really admire and be like, Hey, I'm on the same list. <laughs> I mean, not for long, <laughs> but we were on there for a little while. You, I, you know, that is cool though. I mean, getting up there, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta beat the bush, man. That sounds yeah. bad. But, yeah. um, also, I got a, I got a few more. We can't go yet. I'm sorry, but I know people are gonna get mad. If we don't bring up Ariana Grande. Uh, we've gotta oh, bring up, uh, Ariana Grande, Rihanna. Uh, yeah. that's a heck of a story, right? Um, sure. Then there is Amy Winehouse. We cannot yeah. leave her off the no, list. She here. was fantastic. Uh, just true to her craft, you know, regardless of the things that went on. Um, Adele, the voice of Adele. Oh, man, I love Adele. She's got love a power Adele. voice, man. She really has the voice and she gets stage fright, man. That's always, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's nice to actually witness someone being real, you know, of just like, hey, can we start it over again? And I think I... it's okay to do. Yeah, I don't get get stage fright because I'm very comfortable on stage because I'm not different on stage than I am sitting in my living room. I mean, maybe maybe, it's because you don't see the audience, so it makes it easier. I I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, but but I do worry. So I'm not. I don't have stage fright, but I do always worry Mm. about being my best, Mm. and I do always work hard to assure the day of a show. I'm able to really devote myself to doing that and not having a lot of other stuff going on. Um, so I do, but I, but the thing is, I'm really, I'm the same person in my living room that I am on stage. There's really no difference, maybe a little mm-hmm. more energetic on stage, a little, a little, a little louder, but, but I'm not, uh, I, I'm really, I'm really very much the same as there's no persona that, that takes over, but I will say that. Uh, I do think of the stage as my my domain, and when I go on the stage, it's my stage, and you know, and you're in my house. <laughs> it's like you know, yeah, yeah. this is this is my spot, this is my place. But I I I, I don't forget, so I don't get stage fright, but I do I do work hard to make sure that the show is the only thing I'm focusing on, and not to let anything else be part of my considerations. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's it, th- there's always something else going on. But I try to leave all my worries, all my cares, all my anything else going on, like leave it at the at the stage door. That sounds and, like a country you know, song. It does. And uh so but yeah, so I mean I but I, I do respect people that go out and just sort of, you know, live their life on stage, which is what I do. You're just you're just who you are. So the fact that Dell has stage fright and she's able to to handle that, I mean, and just, you know, be honest with people about it is great. I think so. I think it's it's huge to do. You know, things have changed so much in performance too. Um, to you know, there's so much going on stage. Like to me, like something like J Lo would do, or um, 
Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and Miley, and all that. These huge stage performances. Yeah, Janet Jackson. You know, um, there are such huge performances that you know all this dancing and the fitness level. Oh my God! Like they yeah, that's pretty are. Impressive. It's they work hard. These are not like you know rolling out. Of, Janice Joplin is having another swig of whiskey and another joint and some heroin. You know, this is not <laughs> happening. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. They, they're they clean and working hard, um, but they also um, do some positive role mo- models. You know, they're yeah. positive ro- role models for women. I think Pink is very much that way. Very oh, outspoken well, I, about I mental a, health, a, all of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think Beyonce is real big about that because she's like, hey, I'm a little plus size. Get over it. I mean, you know, I think that's Beyonce. great. I don't think she, yeah, I mean, you don't mess with her, but Pink does acrobatics and she was a gymnast, right? I know. She, she went through some addiction phase and, and she's a winemaker. Like, hey, I did, you know, I did not know that. She makes wine. Yes, we like that about her. Um, mm. But there's Rihanna, we were talking about Ariana Grande, the other woman that I really want to give a shout out to, who I think is a very positive influence is Alicia Keys. Oh, she's, and she's great. She's a badass. She's yeah. And she was part of the Super Bowl thing with Usher. So that was cool. Oh, she, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea about Super Bowl stuff at all, other than men around, running around in tights. I did not say that. You did. Um, I did. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> and I do want to give out a shout out for the chicks. I know they've got a bumpy road. We talked about them on the last show, uh, or two ago. And, um, I, they had a good sound and there was oh, one song that really gets me is the traveling soldier mm. that song we, we were doing doing a military music playlist or something and it came up and i was like wow i didn't know this song and this is really heartfelt and good and there's a lot of um singers in groups like the mamas and papas the chicks that are all women but then there's also um you know look at uh little big town is that their name big little yeah, town, little big little town. Big town. yeah Love Those them. women, I mean, the sing ABBA, look at ABBA, you know, these power singers, you know, that have men and women, we can't leave out those women just because they're coupled with men in a, in a singing force, you know. I will um, also say, just to backtrack with the with the Dixie Chicks, or the Chicks as they're now called, uh, they were fantastic. But, you know, during their hiatus, they had some solo projects together. Natalie Maines had a solo album mm-hmm. under her name. And the other two girls had an album called Courtyard Hounds. That, or that was not an album, but a, a band called Courtyard Hounds. And so if you haven't heard those, they're well worth a listen. I like it. I like it. I, I got to go check that out. And Katie Lang, that was the other person. Oh, my, my, yeah, so good. You know what it is? It's the earthiness. And I don't think, you know, I don't like the high-pitched squeaky voice. Nancy's the same. She's like, if you know, we, we take care of cats. So when we want that, that's what we, <laughs> we go for. But... <laughs> You know, Katie Lang has this just, you know, she wrote the song, um, I'll Walk Through the Snow Barefoot. And, and she, oh, anyone idea. could do Roy Orbison. It was, you know, she's got it. And, um, she was in that, that, um, ah, is it black and white? The Roy Orbison thing. Bruce Springsteen was on it. Bonnie Raitt, uh, Tom Waits, I think, was in there too. And Katie Lang. And, oh, ugh, I'm missing out some people in there. But there's this, it, it's black, It's in black and white. And it was like a night with Roy Orbison. Hmm. And they all performed his songs. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen that. I'll check that out. Oh, it is. Um, I I could, I, mm, I could rewatch that every week and never get old of it or listen to it. You know, you can listen to the album, too, I think. And, um it is just phenomenal. And Katie is incredible, okay. you know, but I, I walk through the snow barefoot. If you hear that song, cause she's got a, um, she can go up and it's very, um, tribal in a weird way. Um, huh. like a soulful tribal, almost native American. There's going to be some kind of lineage in there that's going on, but it's, it's like an ancient sound. It, mm. It's cool. And that just brings me to someone who's not on the same sound level, but a whole different level that if I don't bring up these two women, I have friends that will yell at me. Tori Amos. Oh, love Tori Amos. Right? 
I mean, I've got to think about these women who are playing instruments too, right? And and she is an incredible keyboardist. Mm-hmm. And the other one, Kate Bush. Oh, we don't yeah. bring up Kate Bush, right? I'm Running so, up that hill. so excited that Stranger Things brought her music back into focus. That was great. Yeah, I mean, she was big when when I was in school, you know. Yeah. Um, I won't say which year, but she was no, big don't. during that. But we also have got to bring up Patty Smith. Sure. Yeah. So, have we co- how many have we covered? A like lot. Like a hundred. <laughs> I don't know. And the, the sad part oh, is there's still a million we says, haven't covered. Nancy just said Gwen Stefani. Well, oh, yeah, actually, good point. No, but that that is because you got to, well, she was big, you know, just after Alanis Morissette almost, like just kind of after that time frame. Yeah, with, with no and, doubt. And with no doubt. I loved her stuff with no doubt. I like no and doubt. And then she moved into pop and then she moved to the country a little bit. And... Yeah. I like women who go and like, you know, any music. I don't care if it's men, women, both, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, do it and go for it, you know, and just so long as you're not hurting anyone, you know, right. that's the thing. I also want to give a shout out to all the women in the music industry itself, whether you're in makeup, clothing, set design, the actual travel plans, the roadies. There are so many in music management, um, PR, sound engineers. Yeah. God, sound engineers. There are so many women in the music industry and over history, they've had a rough time of it and they had to become very thick skinned as well. Yeah. And um, I just want to give them a shout out because you know, getting up on stage, writing the songs and all that is one thing, but you've got people behind you. Just like your wife helps you, Joey. Just gotta oh, give Jen a shout out. See? There's a team effort behind every famous person. Oh yeah, it's 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 definitely a team effort. It's it's a I mean it takes a village to you know <laughs> to, to do this stuff. Yep, and women are good organizers. Big time. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, thank you, Joey. This was fun. You know, always a pleasure to be in your company. Hey, well, have fun. We can't wait for next month. We're gonna we're gonna be in the full throes of spring. We're all yes. the bunnies jumping everywhere. Spring is here now on this a podcast. Rabbit. We all like a little rabbit. <laughs> rabbit, rabbit. Listen, when you get to the end of the month, remember you go for good luck. The night well, of the rabbit. last day of the month, go hair, hair, and then rabbit, rabbit. When you wake up, if you can remember to do that, you'll My have friend. luck. My friend Richard Blade, who's a famous uh, DJ, and he's on Sirius XM uh, on their new wave channel uh, called First Wave. He said there's an old English tradition that you're supposed to say white rabbits three times uh, at the beginning of each month. So there's there's yeah. another rabbit uh, superstition for you. All right. Well, maybe we'll do a whole show on rabbits. Just do both. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Do maybe rabbit. like a... was it? Is it what's the, yours? Hair, hair, rabbit, rabbit. Was it? It's hair, hair. You go to sleep. You last yeah. thing you should say is hair, hair. The night uh-huh. before, the, like if it's January 31st, you know, okay. yeah. you, hair, hair. And the first thing you say in the morning is rabbit, rabbit. Okay. And whoever remembers that as a kid, I was always trying to do that. And, you know, I don't I don't want to say what comes out of my mouth when I first wake up in the morning. I have <laughs> <It's>, suspicion. <laughs> a lot of times it's like, where's the coffee? Bring the coffee. I heard where's that. the coffee? Yeah, yeah, we want the coffee. Coffee. Is very important. I have it, a T-shirt is... that I sleep in. That's a little owl who looks half asleep, and he's like, "Shut up and bring me coffee." And that's, so that's it. kind of the yeah. Yeah. And, uh, do you I have listen to, say, to music I'm... in the morning when you have your coffee? Do you listen to music? Uh, sometimes, but uh, most of the time, um, I it depends on what I'm doing. So uh, oftentimes, I will spend the first forty five minutes of my day eating breakfast and getting my coffee and all that kind of stuff. I'll oftentimes spend that uh, talking to my mom and mm. uh, just visiting with her. And uh, a lot of times we'll watch, she likes to watch uh, Kelly and Mark or Mark and Kelly or however they have, I guess it's Kelly and Mark. And, um, and it, so the, the, that show that's been on for like a billion years. And I like it too, to be honest. Um, and, and then sometimes uh, after I do that, I'll go for coffee cup number two. And I will come up and do emails. So mm. I tend I tend not to listen to music uh, because my computer talks to me and I have to listen to what the computer is saying. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And well, it's actually good to have silence once in a while to appreciate. But I will say when yeah. I was on tour, I, I agree. 
I will say when I was on tour in the UK uh, back this past in past year, um, every morning I would get up with my coffee and go out on the patio. We had we had we had a townhouse that we rented, and we'd go out on the the balcony, which was huge, and we'd drink our tea or our coffee and have breakfast and just have a nice quiet time. This is in Canary Wharf, and uh, that was beautiful. And it was it was a little cold because it was in October, but. Um, it, they had the balcony had these wind breaks, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, mm-hmm. And as long as it wasn't raining, it was, uh, which it does rain a you know, good little bit in the UK, but as long as it wasn't raining, it was nice. So yeah, I did that. And I really uh, like a good cup of coffee outside. Like I um, when we, when one of my favorite places to have coffee is we do a pet sit up in Burnsville, North Carolina. It's in the Piscon National Forest and they have this balcony and it overlooks the forest. Like you're in the Smoky Mountains, you're in it. Nice. And um, you wake up in the morning, you go out, the sun rises, or sometimes it's really full of mist and fog, what makes the, the Smoky Mountains, right? Yeah. And so I don't, I don't know which one's the smoky or the blue or whatever, but it is just, it's Appalachian country, like the prime, prime, prime Appalachian country. And you have coffee and you've got Lucy the dog and you just, it changes so fast. And just to be awake, even if it's cold, you know, it's like, it's, it's a good wine time spot too, at the end of the day, just say, you know, that's the bookends in our life. You have to have the <laughs> wine and then you have to have the coffee to balance out the wine. It's all good. Yeah. Um, just don't do too much of either and you'll be okay. If you do too much of either, it's not good. But yeah. um, it, it just to have that in the morning, it's like, that is like, that's wakey, a beautiful way wakey. to start your day. That's yeah. Great. Being outside nature, fresh air mm-hmm. um, and a good cup of coffee. It's like, yeah, let's get it on. <laughs> let's go <laughs> all right i'm gonna go listen to some joan osborne you got me all riled up with that once i start on that album it's kind of like a replay thing so gonna have to do that uh everyone thank you for joining us here on big blend radio keep up with joey at joeystucky.com thanks joey my pleasure my friend thank you for listening to big blend radio keep up with our shows at bigblendradio.com